Hello everyone, this is Crota coming at you, giving you a replay and a shoutcast between Shao KK and Tho against uh, Tara and WFZ. Let's go ahead and choose an observer. I believe Tara is the red orc that you're seeing here. I'm going to turn on ally colors just so it is easier to keep track of what's going on. Tara is the red orc. Off over here we have um, the red undead which is going to be WFZ. Though, so, nope, this is actually Shao KK spawning as the teal orc. And finally, we have Tho spawning as the teal human. Now, oh, this is just so weird. Hearing the Warcraft, the orc song, instead of the human song when watching the replay. Just a slightly different, a little bit more drums, I think. But other than that, nothing really, really to talk about. Now, we are doing a 2v2. And I know a lot of you guys out there really enjoy 2v2s. So I thought I would go ahead and give this a cast. Now, Knollwood is a map that both of these players should be rather familiar with. Knollwood is a rather large map. There are six spawning locations. And you pretty much have a two out of three chance that one of you is spawning directly next to your opponent. There's only a one in three chance that, you're, um, that it's a full cross spawn. And you can see on this particular map that everyone is more or uh, more or less on the west side so this is going to be a west side battle we may see some creeping off in these areas off over here and maybe even into this creep camp down over here is really when you start to get into a dangerous situation because you don't want to be all the way on the other side of the map if your base is getting attacked 2v1 the reason being is that even though you do have S scrolls of town portal to teleport back quickly burning two scrolls of town portal when the other team can just simply walk away is a real real big damage or a real real big gold loss 700 gold gone in an instant to really just try and walk back and then you have to replace those scrolls of town portal which is always always a bit of a problem all right it looks like one militia will get taken out oh no i believe he actually hit the water elemental on his way out so he was able to dodge pretty much all of that meanwhile back down over here you can see that the blade master is going after the null warden creep camp as well off over here the blade master is going for this null brute and he's gonna steal the item what item was picked up it was claws of attack plus six that may be given to the blade master a very very strong item for him as the blade master does get pick up a gloves of haste all right there is the wind walk as the blade master now just going to be able to regroup with the rest of his partner is the archmage going to perhaps try and pick up level two that could be the case and i believe they are communicating with each other otherwise the blade master may accidentally steal some experience from the archmage all right no brute is going to get taken down you can see that there are a whole bunch of skeletal minions here trying to run away oh they are going to get the water elemental though and that may have been a big big change there as we are now looking at skeleton warriors getting taken down meanwhile blade master finishing off this creep camp here does have those gloves of haste and it should be given to the blade master shortly meanwhile the other blade master has double healing salves double circlets of nobility dust of appearance to spot the other blade master and also a speed scroll all right blade master looking to chase down an orc grunt not gonna happen meanwhile the archmage is already pressuring inside the base halls of the dead we are seeing a 19 over 20 supply a very fast tech to tier 2 but unfortunately the ziggurats were either destroyed while being built or cancelled causing a bit of delay now the archmage normally would not be able to do such a thing but because of the additional um, damage from the uh, claws of attack and the circlet of nobility i think that pushed it just a bit over the edge as we are looking at now grunts joining in to try and take down this archmage meanwhile the blade master is going to every corner of the map getting all of the necessary good items this no brute will get taken down here in just a second there was a critical strike um what item was left behind it looks like the gloves of haste or another circle of mobility not quite sure unless perhaps the other blade master had taken it down soon or earlier meanwhile off to the north the blade master is going into the orc town trying to really harass this orc peon line so far though the blade master has only gotten um, a very very f a low number of kills so hold on that peon may oh oh starts building an orc burrow that was not a smart idea at all 
as you as you know um, that building that orc borough um, it ends up getting a cancellation there and that is just a bit of a problem all right this one peon gonna run go ahead and run back inside he noticed that there was the wind walking blade master the blade master is still low on hit points so we'll see if he does come back meanwhile scroll a town portal as that was a two on one gank here the blade master now is going to be forced to run back here as we now see that the blade master is attempting to take down this orc burrow for the second time all right the orc burrow down to 70 hit points down to 30 hit points there's the cancellation and oh the, the peon jumps back in once more we are still seeing that 28 over 30 supply though so that is going to be a significant delay to the shadow hunter back over here archmage may try to go after this mercenary creep camp here and get some very very um just get some mercenaries mercenaries are very strong in the early stages of the game and the blade master still constantly harassing um shao kk so shao kk has not really um, been able to establish his tier two presence yet just now building this orc burrow for i believe the fourth time and the blade master all he really has done is just constantly constantly delayed now the death knight on the other hand the death knight is still sitting at level one and this really puts tara and wfz in a bit of a bind they are not nearly as ahead as they need to be in order to um, catch up their opponents are much further along in terms of level you can see level three on the archmage coming in from tho shao kk's blade Ma or no not that not that's the paladin where is that blade master blade master is sitting at level two and getting very close to level three as well so the hero advantage is definitely belonging to shao kk and tho even though um even though Tara was able to disrupt Shao KK for a, quite a bit of time. Now, solo Paladin on this particular creep camp. And this is a very, very nice strategy by the Paladin here. The Paladin is making sure that he gets to level 2. Picking up a Divine Shield. Picking up a Wand of Mana Stealing. And should be able to heal back up these units. Pretty much up to at least half life in just a moment. Meanwhile, the Death Knight sitting at level 2. Oh, realizes that the Blade Master is right there. And wow, that Blade Master is on the run. Double Claws of Attack plus 6 and now using the healing salve to try and get back up meanwhile the archmage is sitting at level three the paladin is still going at it strong trying to creep i do not think this will give him level three it should get him very very close though as that water elemental is going to get taken down there's that dust of appearance making sure the paladin is going to go ahead and pick up a ring of protection plus two um, and then the Devotion Aura. Wow, Devotion Aura. No Divine Shield. 1.5 Armor Devotion Aura instead from that Paladin. As we now see that the Blade Master and the, the Blade Master is here. All right, let's go into a little bit of an engagement here. The Blade Master has been wind walking right there. And let's take a look at this. Rifleman is right there. The Blade Master may try to get an easy kill onto some of these units, but hasn't been able to do so. No Dust of Appearance. Oh, no, there is a Dust of Appearance on the Archmage. And is it going to use it? And, oh, all the ground units are attacking it now. Let's go. Taking it down. The Blade Master did try and steal the item. Who got the item? I'm not quite sure. The Paladin, yes. <laughs> the Paladin got Devotion Aura. How funny. All right, so the Paladin with Devotion Aura and double rings of protection. That Paladin is going to be near impossible to stop, especially with the Shadow Hunter backing it up with Healing Wave. Archmage. Paladin, Blade Master, Shadow Hunter going up against Blade Master, Shadow Hunter, Death Knight, and Dark Ranger. So it is what a four on four in terms of heroes and there is a quick hex onto a priest the priest trying to run away now oh the holy light saves the priest as the priest is able to back off spirit leg now has been dropped and it looks like we're gonna have our first real engagement here so far positioning is much much better for the orc you can see scroll of protection has been popped by the red team the red team trying to stay alive the healing wave and a holy no that was a leveling so the paladin now sitting at level three with level with 400 heal across any unit on his side the death knight still sitting at level two really needs to get to level three now get up to level three should be able to start nuking opponents units fairly fairly easily however that heal would be rather good on the blade master if it ever came to it there is a little bit more heal the blade master getting low on hit points now wind walking back once more focus firing on both sides peasants are in the fire and in the fray as well a lot of skeletal minions are in this fight and there is a quick disenchant to try and get rid of all of them and they are now all gone 
So far, the priest and the rifleman are still firing back and forth. The positionings, the lines have pretty much been melted away. And we are just looking at utter chaos in this fight. Death Knight still trying to come back around. It looks like an Obsidian Statue will get taken down. There is another heal as the Rifleman with their Focus Fire should start to really, really take its toll. Kodo Beast now joining in on the fight as well. And the Kodo Beast will add some extra damage. The problem is that they are rather, rather weak to um, those Crypt Fiends. Meanwhile, uh, Shadow Hunter, oh, healing waves himself. A Holy Light earlier. And now that Shadow Hunter is back up to full. All right. The additional armor on all of these units. That 1.5 armor really makes making a big difference now as the Blade Master is going to ignore a grunt. Blade Master now turning around. Is he going to try to go after it? No, he is not. There is another Holy Light and the red team, Tara and WFZ, walks away from this fight with the upper hand as um, WF, oh, sorry, as Tho and Shao KK are running home with their tails between their legs, so to speak. All right. Let's take a look at things. Blade Master, level 3. Shadow Hunter, level 1. Kodo Beast, very, very vulnerable. And it looks like it will get taken down. Um, there it goes. Nothing. Oh, in the belly. But the Blade Master ends up killing the, his own Kodo Beast to deny experience. Nicely done there. Meanwhile, the Archmage of Tho thinking of a very aggressive move here to take down the Rock Golem and the Granite Golems here. Uh, a very decent number of riflemen, which is exactly what you need to take down these rock golems. The rock golems, and as long as there is a water elemental somewhere tanking damage, it does work out well. There you have it. Um, you cannot attack with magic damage, obviously, as those rock golems are immune to magic. There is that granite golem, also immune to magic, now attempting to take down this paladin. That paladin is rather buff, though, with ten over 10 armor. And picks up a Tome of Experience. And a Archmage picks up a Tome of Retraining. All right, Scroll of Town Portal now back over here. We are going to land. Where are they going to be landing? Off to the north. And here we go. This could be a very important fight. Paladin does have a Red Drake. Sell some items. And what is the fight going to be? Ensnare now down. All right, there is the Blizzard. And a beautiful position on the Blizzard. None of the units can actually get off to the north easily at all. All right, the Raiders, can they get there? All right, Archmage now looking to back off. But the, um, the Orc Burrows can now start joining in on this fight if need be. As we now see a Red Drake, a summoned unit, has joined in on the fight as well. So far, this is looking extremely good. The Archmage could try and get another round of Blizzard off. And yes, the Blizzard is raining down from the sky. It is coming soon. No trademark intended, but it is coming hard as the Archmage now gets up to level 4 with level 2 Brilliant Aura is going to constantly, constantly rain down those blizzards. The problem is now that the Archmage is in fact silenced by the Dark Ranger. There goes one Crypt Fiend as all the units have been able to lick their wounds. Taking a look at the supply count. 36 over 60, 49 over 60, compared to 43 over 50, and 47 over 50. Tara and WFZ had the upper hand, but the superior drakes and the superior levels may really, really begin to show itself as the Shadow Hunter now quickly, quickly reaching to level 2. No Blade Master off over here. That Shadow Hunter. Um, will be staying at level 2. I don't believe an, any creep camp can get to level 3 um, by itself here as we are now looking at the granite golem taken down. Potion of Divinity. That is a full, I believe, 25 seconds of invulnerability and that is very, very important for the upcoming battle. Blade Master should most likely be picking that item up. Um, not quite sure if it will. Blade Master now seen at level 4. Yes, there is that Potion of Divinity on that Blade Master, as I imagine Shadow Hunter now sitting at level 3 as well, as we are getting into very, very high levels in this 2v2 game. Now, at the 14-minute mark of, of this game, both of these teams have extremely large armies and have not gone into no, low upkeep. By staying in no upkeep, they are making sure that they are always always able to train up um, or always able to train up more units by having additional supply but also more importantly not getting taxed this is one of those situations where because you effectively your army has a maximum supply of 100 you're able to get away with a lot less um, a lot less supply in actually trying to take down your opponent's bases all right crypt fiends grunts 
Spirit Walkers all wandering over here. A red Drake getting caught a bit out of position. It's going to get taken down. There it goes without much of a fight. But here, what do we have? The Blade Master and the Archmage trying to catch up to an Abomination. There is a um, Disease Cloud on the Abomination. So that is going to be a significant source of dam source of damage over time, as there comes a blizzard. Where is the silence? There is the silence across all of those casters. There, the priest will be forced to back off as the grunt now getting taken out. Blade Master continuing the fight does have that full potion of, of invulnerability. Is it going to be able to survive long enough? Um, in order to really, really make a big difference. There is constantly more and more Blizzard coming in. And there it is again. So much Blizzard. 40 damage every second. Just raining down across multiple units there. As the Shadow Hunter ends up falling. Oh, the Shadow Hunter ends up falling poorly there. Unable to escape. But is the Archmage, Paladin, and Blade Master enough to really win out on this fight? All right, there's a Kodo Beast. It is currently ensnared. The Abomination is currently being digested. It does take quite a bit of time as the Archmage is pretty much blizzarding nothing at this point. We need to see some crazy, crazy fights here. Is that Blade Master going to get taken down? Yes, it will. Now with the Blade Master down, things are looking very up for Tho and Shao KK as we now see more Spirit Link coming across. All right, Archmage could come in with another Blizzard here in just a moment. There is another Blizzard. Oh, but get us get silenced immediately and now being forced to back off again. Rifleman trying to back off here. Let's take a look at what's happening next. The Paladin is in the front position. All right. Oh, um, constantly getting healed. And now it looks like this Kodo Beast is finally going to get taken back out. All right, Kodo Beast down to 239 hit points. There is the Dust of Appearance. Kodo Beast isn't going to be able to make it out. It looks like it will not. Down to 19 hit points. Abomination comes back out to see the light of day and have some fun, only to finally get destroyed once more. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, Rifleman going after a Kripfi. Not the best use of damage as the, uh, what is this? The Potion of Invulnerability now used by the Archmage in order to stay alive. The attrition is just starting to take a bit too much away from the Red Army as the Red Army now is being forced to run back the other way. Shadow Hunter without a Scroll of Town Portal now with pretty much nowhere to go paladin has a clarity potion should probably be um, quaffing that sometime soon and you can see that the paladin and archmage are both getting very very close to level five all right shadow hunter picks up a scroll of town portal very important there blade master may be able to get off like oh can't get the kill grunt finally gets taken down there as the blade master gets to level five nicely done there as Really, Tho and Shao KK has a very, very strong lead in this game. They are up in terms of hero, and they are also up in terms of army size. Blade Master quickly takes on a Crypt Fiend as the Blade Master is still trying to run forward. Oh, there goes a Raider, and there's a Quick and Snare onto a Destroyer. The Destroyer pretty much caught in between a rock and a hard place. Is it going to be able to escape? I don't believe so. There it goes, giving level 5 to both the Paladin and the Archmage now. Level 5 Paladin means 600 hit point heal on a Blade Master means that that Blade Master is pretty much never gonna die. That Blade Master with that very high bursty uh, auto attack can even come back over the top. Shadow Hunter now seeing that level 3 in a bit of trouble. Shadow Hunter trying to heal himself, trying to stay alive here as the Blade Master getting... Um, oh wait, Blizzard now coming down. Blizzard really just destroying everything here and that tech change to Blizzard really, really wreaking havoc onto the army. So much AoE damage. That Blizzard is pretty much destroying everything that you can see there as the archmage is forced to just constantly attack and constantly attack hitting down multiple units and it is doing a great great job all right archmage continuing the chase it looks as though wfz and tara their forces are starting to dwindle at a faster rate almost getting outnumbered two to one and i do believe that this is going to be the gg dark ranger at level three does fall not before getting off another silence but the archmage is just not in any danger of falling and the blade master is also not in danger of falling coming in from the teal team and because of those two heroes their damage is simply through the roof 
51 damage per attack with a very fast attack speed. All right, let's take a look. Where is this Blade Master going to be going next? The Blade Master is all maxed out. Going to perhaps head down here. Uh, Tara, or yeah, Tara's base is looking pretty sparse right now. Seeing that 35 over 60 supply. Riflemen are going to be getting into position. And if they can actually take down a couple of these easy orc burrows, that will pretty much be the game. There's Blizzard now taking out a lot of those poor peasants. The peasants now unable to even properly mine as there are some low hit point units. All right, Blademaster going after the A-bomb. A-bomb now falls and uh, continuing the chase. Tara gives the GG and game one goes to Tho and Shao KK. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed game one in this series where T Tara and Shao KK even though they had a smaller army, was able to come out ahead. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.